2 Corinthians chapter 12. I want to read verses 6 through 9. In fact, if you don't mind, would you stand with me as I read the word of God um, into our hearing on tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 6. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And here's how my Bible reads. If you found it, say amen. amen. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool. For I will speak the truth, but I refrain lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And he said to me, verse 9, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. I want to talk tonight about grace for grown-ups. Yeah, yeah, grace for grown-ups. Pastor Adams, I can distinctly remember the adults of my childhood and the penchant that they had for making sure that there was a separation, a clear separation between grown folk and children. The adults of my childhood were careful to make sure that there was a clear line of demarcation between what grown folk could do and what children could do. Unlike some of the parents today who try to become a buddy and a pal with their children. No, the grown folk of my childhood would have nothing of that. They made sure you understand, understood that I am the adult and you are the child. And even when they got ready to have certain conversations, Pastor, they would, they would put the children out of the room because they were getting ready to do some grown folk talking. Yeah, they understood that some conversations are appropriate for grown folk, but are inappropriate for, for a child. And even in the movie industry, the, the movies are age sensitive. That's why they are rated sometimes PG, uh, PG-13 or R. They would say this movie is restricted for mature audiences only. Because they understand that there are some movies that an adult can watch, but a child ought not watch. And so they say it's for mature audiences only. If there were ever a text of scripture in the Bible that perhaps ought to receive a mature audiences only rating, it is the text that I just read into your hearing, where Paul talks about the grace of God and the role of the grace of God in enabling the child of God to live a victorious and overcoming life. Grace is such a wonderful subject, is it not? There are many definitions and descriptions of this word grace. For some, the grace of God is God's unmerited favor to us. For others, the grace of God is God giving to us that which we don't deserve. And still yet, the grace of God for others is simply God's free gift to us. And each of these definitions and descriptions hold a certain amount of truth about them. However, there's another side of the grace of God that doesn't really look like grace at all. It is a painful and unpleasant side of the grace of God that often challenges our notions of the nature of God's goodness in our lives. Have you ever stopped to consider the fact that God's grace is evident when he gives to us that which we don't deserve. But God's grace is also evident when he allows us to experience that that we don't like. There's another side of the grace of God that doesn't look like grace at all. 
It is one of those less played keys on the piano of Christian living that we don't like to touch. Most of our thoughts and conversations about God's grace are one-sided. Oh, we love to talk about the grace of God that saved us from our sins. That's saving grace. But I'm here tonight to talk about the grace of God that enables us to endure the afflictions of life. That's sustaining grace. And no one was more qualified to talk about the sustaining grace of God than the Apostle Paul. For in the same text, Paul, if you will, allows us to, ex to he, he, allows us, he allows us to ascend with him to the mountain of ecstasy and then descend with him to the valley of agony. For in this text, child of God, he allows us to walk with him, uh, to go with him to a place that he calls the third heaven where he was shown visions and revelations that no mortal man or woman had ever seen before. And in the same breath, he allows us now to walk with him down that lonely corridor of his pain and agony. And while both of these experiences express an, an aspect of the grace of God, it is that painful and unpleasant side of God's grace that I am commissioned to talk about tonight because there are some melodies of the music of your life that can only be heard when you have the courage to touch life's less played keys. And I thought I would preach this, Pastor, because somebody came in here with smiles on your faces, hallelujahs on your lips and uplifted hands. But if the truth were told behind your smiles, behind your hallelujahs, and behind your hand waving, somebody is wondering, Lord, why am I going through what? I'm going through as much of what I'm going through when I'm going through it and how I'm going through it but I'm here to tell you that if your spiritual antenna is up you'll discover that God's grace is not only evident when he allows you to experience that which you don't deserve but God's grace is also evident when he allows you to